Up until this moment, the RTX 4000 series graphics cards have had so much controversy surrounding them, and at least in today's video, I can put the controversy to rest for the RTX 4090, and there's only one way to do that, and that is simply show you the numbers, so let's roll the benchmarks. So if you were just blown back in your chair like I was when I was doing this testing, then you were not alone. The generation over generation increase that the RTX 4090 is giving is absolutely phenomenal. It is mind blowing. I could not believe the FPS gains at 4K. And we will talk about the 4K factor first. If you're playing at 1080p or 1440p, you're gonna be wasting your money in my opinion where this GPU is simply geared up towards someone who wants to max the settings on any title and enjoy high refresh rates on 4K. Now I'm sure it'll even do 8K, but I don't have an 8K monitor here to test with. But that being said, if you are on a 1080p or 1440p monitor, you may wish to rethink if you really need this GPU, especially at 1080p, as we saw with the Horizon Zero Dawn benchmark, we just weren't really gaining any FPS at all. And then if we go to 1440p on Horizon Zero Dawn and Far Cry 6, for example, we were seeing that the CPU was still a limiting factor. Now we tested here today with a 7950X Ryzen 9 clocked at 5.2 gigahertz all cores, and that's also a 6,000 megahertz CL36 DDR5 memory. So even at 4K, some of these titles will start getting CPU bound. That's how powerful this GPU was. The performance is quite simply going to deliver, and it's so high to the point where you've got the options to turn on ray tracing and still get a really smooth experience, whether it's with DLSS 2 or with DLSS 3. But speaking of DLSS 3, I think it's still a little bit buggy. I will put a critiquing point in here where although I tested out a few titles here with DLSS 3 in beta mode, some of the titles were crashing and it was actually quite difficult to test DLSS 3 properly. So I will look forward to giving you guys more of an in-depth video into DLSS 3 once it's more polished. It did give a performance boost, but it wasn't as big as I was expecting it to be. However, it still is in the real infant stages of development in my opinion. NVIDIA have said that they have 35 titles planned to fully utilize this feature. However, it was a little bit buggy and some of the games did crash when I enabled the beta builds for testing purposes with DLSS 3. And I also decided to test it with, when I did test DLSS 3 with DLSS 2, I always use DLSS 2.0 quality setting because that's how I like to play games and that's reflected in the benchmarks here. So let's go over those productivity benchmarks. If you guys are looking for something for professional work and you need the gains, over your previous generation RTX 3090, it's gonna practically deliver 
over double where the GPU CUDA cores can be utilized as we saw with the Blender benchmark and also the V-Ray CUDA benchmark and the ray tracing benchmark. So very powerful card in terms of not just gaming performance, but also productivity. And you may be thinking, what about the actual power consumption? These coolers are absolutely massive, Brian. Surely that's gonna be going up to 600 watts. You're gonna need the biggest power supply you're ever going to need. And here's where I decided to test with an 850 Corsair gold rated power supply. It's sort of like a high end value power supply. And here's where I did leave my computer on benchmarking overnight. Nothing happened to the power supply or the graphics card itself. And also played Apex Legends with my friends at 4K for a few hours just to test the stability. Passed all the tests on an 850 watt power supply. And even then that wasn't undervolting, which I do recommend if you wanna get this graphics card, do undervolt it because in this instance, I saved around 80 watts power draw and I got practically the exact same performance as having it with out of the box settings. So it will undervolt pretty well, though I will be doing a dedicated video on undervolting this card as I have done with recent releases, say for instance, the 7950X, where I believe undervolting is definitely where it's at. But speaking of undervolting, if you do this, you'll also drop the temperatures on the graphics card. And here's where these massive coolers, I feel are a touch of passion dare I'd say from Nvidia, where they want to make sure that people are getting low noise if they're spending 1600 USD on a card. And that's exactly what the founders is delivering. I've got another card here from Colorful, which I'll be reviewing tomorrow. And that's pretty much the same story. Low temperatures, very low noise. Here's where this graphics card out of the box will go to around 40% fan speeds and stay very quiet with 34 decibels of noise. However, these fans, I find that if you raise the speeds even to 60%, they do become very noisy. And some of you guys noticed in yesterday's video, the fan was wobbly on the rear side. The front side wasn't wobbly. I did ask Nvidia about this and they said it's nothing to worry about. And during testing, it hasn't fallen off or tried to uh, do any sort of ninjutsu around the studio here, breaking things. But that said, it is a concern, right? If you're on a bus and the wheels are wobbling, you're probably gonna ask some questions. Hey, you know, bus driver, the wheels are wobbling. Should we pull this thing over and maybe check the wheels? And then the bus driver's like, no, nah, it's, it's fine. And then the, the wheels on the bus just fall off. But perhaps NVIDIA can update us this later and I'll update on the comments because you guys said in the comment section yesterday that other reviewers were having this issue with the fan on the RTX 4090 founders. Though all these gains you have seen here today is of course due to the massive increase in clock speeds. These have gone from roughly 1800 to 1900 megahertz to now going up to 2.8 to 2.9 gigahertz of speed on those cores, as well as you get more of those CUDA cores this generation. You also do get the same amount of VRAM as the 3090, 24 gigabytes, and they have fixed the issue on the original RTX 3090 that they did that with the 3090 Ti. So that's been fixed this generation with the 4090, just like it was on the 3090 Ti. So in terms of temperatures, there's nothing to worry about. And the clock speeds, however, they are just going sky high even with low temperatures. And at least looking at the power consumption or more so the power efficiency this generation, you are getting a lot more efficiency out of these cards simply because the performance is just that much bigger, yet the power consumption is still very well controlled. And that mainly comes from the fact that Nvidia has moved from the Samsung 8 nanometer on the RTX 3000 series to the TSMC 4 nanometer with the RTX 4000 series. They're going over the physical aspects of this card. It is a triple slot cooler, it takes up three slots perfectly, and it does weigh in at roughly 2.2 kilos. I'll throw the dimensions up on the screen, but also you will need four PCA 8 pin power connectors, or of course a new school PCA 5.0 power cable that connects directly to the card. They do include the adapter in the box, which I was using in today's testing, and that worked absolutely fine with piggy tail cables in a two by two from the Corsair RM850X power supply. So in my opinion, you don't have to worry too much about going out and getting a 1500 watt power supply. I did all my testing and even left the system on overnight with an 850 watt, and that wasn't even undervolted, where if I was to use the 4090 in everyday life, I would be undervolting it, saving more power, and making it run basically at RTX 3090 power consumption out of the box. 
but getting double the performance. Going over the rear of the card, you get one HDMI 2.1 and three display port outs. I do prefer to use the HDMI 2.1, so I would like to see more HDMI 2.1 in the future on RTX 4000 or RTX 5000 series graphics cards. Also with the RTX 4090, you do get AV1 encoding support, and this is a new codec designed in 2018. So it's much newer than HEVC and also MP4, but it also compresses video files much better. So in other words, if you wanna stream with lower bit rates and get the same quality as MP4, then you'll do so with saving bandwidth on your internet or if you've got slow upload speeds it's a win there if you're a video editor and you need to get footage remotely to other video editors via sending and uploading over the internet this is going to be a big win too and what i've pulled up on the screen for you is a comparison between the rtx 4090 the 3090 and also amd's card with obs at 40 megabits per second however youtube does compress these comparisons so it's probably going to look very similar on the final output on your monitor. Though with all that juicy information out of the way, it is time to give you guys a conclusion on the RTX 4090. And actually I struggled to think of how to do this conclusion because it comes at a time where higher prices on anything isn't a positive thing. People don't like to see the prices go up, whether it's on a flagship GPU or even on a can of baked beans down the supermarket. Higher prices in general don't put a smile on people's faces. But in this case, we've gone from $14.99 to $15.99. And given the amount of inflation, the amount of money that has been printed by central banks and governments, which have enacted that printing into society, I'm actually surprised that this card is coming in at $15.99. You're getting a much bigger cooler, you're getting much more power, and you're just getting a better card in so many ways over the 3090 that the $15.99 price tag is very justified in my opinion. And if you are a high-end gaming enthusiast or you need this card for work, this is going to deliver and then some. And that's just all there is to it. This card has honestly blown away my expectations on what was possible in a single generational increase. Though keep in mind, there was the 3080, that was at 699. That was the value card from the previous generation. And at least when I add this up, even by doing a simple calculation via EasyBench, this card point for point would be coming in at roughly $732 adjusted to a 3080 price, if that makes any sense. So basically you're getting similar value per performance metric as a 3080 with the 4090. And given all that inflation that has happened since the release of the 3080, I'm gonna say even as a flagship card, this is actually good value. It's shockingly good value considering I've never seen a flagship come in with this sort of value in the past, especially compared to previous generations. So I was expecting this card to come in with maybe an 80% increase and a $2,000 price tag, but it's come in with more or less a doubling of performance at the cost of $1,600. So in my books, if you are in the market for a 4090, then it is definitely going to deliver for your needs. But do make sure you have the right CPU for the job, as well as having the right monitor. Otherwise, I feel like you're gonna be throwing money away if you don't have those other two set configurations right. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. But basically, in a nutshell, 1600 USD, that is the entry price to play around with this thing. But is it desirable? And the answer is overwhelmingly yes. This thing is just pinging off the charts in terms of its desirability. NVIDIA definitely know how to deliver. That's one thing they know how to do. And this time around, I feel like they've over delivered with this graphics card and you can see it when you hold these cards in your hand yes they are massive yes they're not going to be for mini itx builders but there is a lot of passion that has been put into this card from start to finish with everything especially once you start gaming at 4k high refresh so they are definitely targeting their market and they're delivering when they do that targeting there's not much else to say here other than this product 
is phenomenal, but it does have a high price tag. And whether or not you want that performance, that is up to you guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. I did have a tough time making it because recommending a $1,599 card is something that I haven't done before. If you go back to my RTX 3090 review, I was basically saying go buy the RTX 3080. If you go back to my 2080 Ti review, I was basically saying this thing wasn't good value. However, the RTX 4090, like I said in the previous video, it's going to make you want to go onto the baked beans for a while and save up and get it because it's going to do it. Anyway, guys, do let us know in the comment section below what your thoughts and opinions are after seeing all these benchmarks, all these numbers. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you stayed this far, then be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in another one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. And they said it's nothing to worry about and during testing it hasn't fallen. <laughs> Up until this moment, the RTX 4000... I think someone had a heart attack because they couldn't pre-order their RTX 4090. <laughs>